Hi, my name is Brad Neal with the University of Indianapolis. This video is going to be over measurements. Before you watch this video, please make sure that you do the reading assignment, section 1.4 of our textbook titled Measurements. Um, and the link to the book is provided here. So when we measure something um, and we convey the, we want to convey the information about the measurement to a reader, to anybody else, we need to convey three pieces of information. We need to tell the size or the magnitude of our measurement. This is usually done with a number. Pretty straightforward. You've been doing that most of your life. We need to present that information in some kind of standardized way. And we do that with a unit. Um, and this is typically if you're measuring length, something like inches or temperature, you might say Fahrenheit or Celsius, something that gives whoever you're presenting the information to some kind of bearing and understanding of the thing that is being discussed. There's a big difference between one foot and one meter uh, lengthwise. So we need to be able to tell not only the number one, but we also have to tell what that actual unit is that goes along with the measurement. The last thing that we need to indicate to our audience is the uncertainty in our measurement. And we're going to talk about that here in a little bit. So specifically when we're talking about numbers, this is the same way you've been doing stuff for a long time. It's just numbers. Now the one thing though that you may not be completely um, comfortable with is scientific notation. We're going to be using scientific notation quite a bit in our class. So your textbook has a nice little review area over things like scientific notation. Um, and this link will be available for you in the discussion, or I'm sorry, in the uh, YouTube description if you want to go through and read that. It's also linked in the 1.4 reading assignment itself. We'll be practicing problems in our discussion section that utilize uh, the ability to use scientific notation. So make sure that you practice those, look over those rules if you have any questions before you come in. When it comes to units, there's tons and tons of units out there. Um, typically, if you live in America, you're used to units as to, such as inches, feet, Fahrenheit, um, miles, that kind of thing. For chemistry, we're going to use the uh, SI system, the international system, most of the time for our units of measure. And you might be looking at these and you might be saying, okay, this looks a lot like the metric system. It's not exactly one-to-one, -one, but it's pretty close. So for example, length in the SI system is measured in a meter. And the symbol that we're gonna give it is just that lowercase m. When you're writing out the symbol for a unit, it's gonna be very important that you actually write that out properly. Meaning, don't use a capital M when a lowercase m is supposed to be used. Capital M in chemistry stands for molarity, whereas a lowercase m stands for either meters or molality. We probably won't deal with molality too much in general chemistry one. Point is, make sure that you're using the cases correctly when you're using your units. For mass, we're going to be using a kilogram. Please note, mass is not the same thing as weight. Weight depends upon gravitational force on whatever it is you're standing on. And that's where that whole thing of your weight on the moon is less than your weight on Earth. Ha, ha, ha. But guess what? Your mass is the exact same because mass is independent of gravitational pull. We measure mass in kilograms. Time, we're going to typically be measuring that in seconds. Temperature, we're going to be using Kelvin. Kelvin is a unit that is based off of absolute zero. So absolute zero is what we theoretically say is the lowest possible temperature that we can have. It's when all motion stops. Everything is completely motionless. Um, there is no energy left in a thing. We will be doing some examples of converting from Kelvin into uh, Celsius into Fahrenheit as part of our course. Now, when it comes to electrical current, 
we're not going to be really doing dealing with that much here in general chemistry one luminous intensity we're not going to be dealing with but the amount of a substance the mole we will be using quite a bit um, but we're not going to take time today to start investigating that um, we're going to wait until chapter two and three but we're going to use that one very extensively throughout the rest of uh, our course. So that's two of the three things that we have whenever we're coming up with a unit. The third thing, is, or I'm sorry, when we're coming up with a measurement, the third thing is uncertainty. Make sure you watch video 1.5 for this topic and you read section 1.5 in your textbook because uncertainty is this kind of big topic that really needs its own video and its own space to talk about. And it comes down to, um, realistically, science, uh, sig figs, uh, significant figures. Please watch that stuff for the description about uh, uncertainty. Now let's close out this video here by doing a fairly basic unit conversion. We're going to be doing a lot of unit conversions here as part of this course. Before you can do any kind of unit conversions, you have to know your equivalencies. So your equivalencies are saying one thing is equal to another thing. And a lot of times in chemistry, there's going to be something like the one that we see here on the screen. So it'll say one inch is equal to 2.54 centimeters. If you don't know your equivalencies, one, you're going to get questions wrong. Two, there's going to be uh, around 15 or so equivalencies that you just have to have memorized. The reason you have to have them memorized is it will take too much of your time to continuously look them up for every single problem that you're going to do as part of this course. So it's going to be really beneficial to you to have those 15 memorized down. A sheet with those will be available to you on the ACE site. But let's do a practice problem here quickly with this equivalency. So, okay, we've got here now um, our little blank canvas. We've got our we've got our equivalency. Let's write up some kind of practice problem and let's say convert. Oh, I don't know, 3.45 inches, 2 centimeters. On the spicy scale, in terms of like peppers, I like to rate things in a pepper scale. This is going to be like a green pepper level of question. So if you've got like green peppers that are really mild and anybody can eat, and then you have like habaneros and you have like ghost peppers and these really crazy kinds of things, this is going to be about as mild as it gets. So let's get started. And let's also include that S there for inches. <laughs> okay. The key here is going to be having that one inch equals 2.54 centimeters. Because this is an equivalency, and we know it's an equivalency because of that equal sign, we can actually write this out in two different ways. We can say one inch over 2.54 centimeters, or we could say 2.54 centimeters over one inch. Now, the, we wrote this out now as a fraction. We've expressed our equivalency as a fraction. Mathematically, this works is because we're saying one inch is equal to 2.54. So something, the one inch divided by the 2.54 centimeters, this, it's the exact same thing. Something divided by itself is e always equal to one, numerically. So that's like the math theory that's allowing us to write this out either way. So we can put the 2.54 centimeters in our numerator, the number on the top, or we could put the uh, 2.54 centimeters in our denominator, the number on the bottom. How does writing out our equivalency as this fraction help us? Well, if we're starting with our 3.54 inches, we can now do some multiplication to determine um, 
and do some uh, crossing out between things in our numerator and our denominator with our units. So for example here, let's say that we take the first one up here, this the first equivalency that we wrote out, and let's multiply our one inch by 2.54 centimeters. Well, if we pause now and we think about this, we have inches in the numerator, because really we could write this out as 3.54 inches over one. The over one part is just implied. But we have inches here in our numerator, we have inches here in our numerator. So inches times inches ends up being inches squared. Our units in our denominator be one times centimeters and be centimeters. So our final answer, if we multiply this out, is gonna have units of inches squared over centimeters. I don't even need to type this into the calculator to know th that this answer isn't correct. And I know it's not correct, because the question up here asked us to convert things to just centimeters. What I have done is converted into inches squared over centimeters. That doesn't work. So let's try another way. Let's try our 3.45 inches. And now let's use the other way that we wrote out the equivalency. Let's write out the one, or I'm sorry, let's write out the Where's the undo button? There it is. The 2.54 centimeters over one, over one inch. Now, if I go in, I start looking at my units. An inch in my numerator cancels with an inch that's in my denominator. The only units I'm left with now are centimeters. So unit-wise, doing the operation on the bottom answers the question that's being asked. 3.45 multiplied by 2.54, throw that into your calculator or do your long multiplication, and that becomes the final number that you'll end up reporting here. So according to what we've said a measurement needs, a measurement needs a number which we would have reported right here based on the 3.45 times the 2.54. It has to have a unit, which is the centimeters, but the third thing it needs is that uncertainty indication. And that's where we're going to say and remind you, we didn't cover uncertainty in this video. Uncertainty is gonna be covered in the 1.5 video. So, everything we've done here is correct, we're just not done yet. What I would like you to do is to come back and recheck out this example and try to come up with what you think the right final answer should be after you've watched that 1.5 video because we're two thirds of the way there. If we just report what our calculator gives us, that big long string of numbers that'll come up and that unit, we will be two thirds of the way there. We won't have the correct final answer though. So that's the basics behind measurements. And that's a real basic unit conversion problem. We'll be practicing more in class and you'll be practicing some on your homework. If you have any questions about this topic or any others, please make sure that you message me on ACE and I'll do my best to help you out. Thank you very much. Hope you have a great day.